thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakwadash. And this is from a video that was put up entitled Who is Abraham's Seed in Genesis 15, verse 18. And this was put up by uh, GMS Bible Teacher SC7. Which is the uh, elder brother Manatiz Akbar. And you know what? Let me. I didn't want to go through this. I was listening to it, so it prompted me to make a video myself. Kind of a response, lamb, uh, lamb back. Let's listen to a little of this. Actually, let's look at this comment. It says, uh, Spiritual Food uh, 144. It says, Shalom, Elder, uh, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai Baraka. <laughs> I thought that means he, you're rubbing up to him, getting on his good side. In Genesis chapter uh, 15, verse 18, that seed that, <clears throat> that that land was promised to be given to are the nations listed <clears throat> in verse 19 and 21, right? No, no. Now, I don't know if this man is asking a sincere question or if he wants the, uh, the nation to make it. You know, he's looking like, like uh, the, uh, the Manatiz Akbar said, uh, looking for a loophole. A Jew Negro's got a damn problem. And this proves that we're the Israelites, if you're saying that. But I'm going I'm to let, let you listen to a little bit of this, and I'm going to go into the Genesis 15 myself is who is Abraham C from Genesis 15 right now you don't want to be that guy looking for loopholes and this is the definition of loophole loophole it says an ambiguity or inadequacy in the law or set of rules and a lot of Israelites are looking for loopholes to invite the other nations into a promise yeah why would you why would you be concerned about the other nations man I mean, are you out there on the highways and the byways? Because if you're not, you're not concerned about your nation. That's a video right there. <laughs> Let's listen to a little bit more. Into the covenant, into the promise of Abraham. Now, this individual asked a question. Spiritual food, 144. All right, he gives a greeting. And then he says in Genesis chapter 15, 18, that seed that that land was promised to be given to all the nations listed in verse 19 through 21, right? That is not right. The way it is written, you would think, you know, it may give you that to the average reader. You may think that that's true. And we're going to go and read it. You may think that that's true. But if you understand the Bible in itself and the way that the Most High dealt with Abraham and, and, and who exactly his promises was to, you wouldn't think that. And the reason why I say don't be the guy looking for loopholes is because this very same individual, not that long ago, asked me a question concerning Abraham and his seed and the promises and the covenant. I can't remember exactly what the question was, but I know it had to do with him thinking that the seed of Abraham is talking about all these other nations. Okay? And if, you, if the brother watching, when I answered back, I wasn't trying to be snappy, but you have to understand that if you're going to be one of them people that's looking for loopholes, that's the kind of answer that you're going to get. Because if you're really in the truth, you're supposed to understand and know that the Most High only dealing with the Israelites. Sure, other nations were blessed through the Israelites, right? But that ain't the Most High to make no covenant of salvation with the other nations. And none of them are going to be blessed. To be blessed, who's blessed today? Are the Chinese blessed? Not really. Are the Japanese, Hamites, Africans? Are the Ish Arabs, Ishmaelites blessed? No. The only ones that are blessed are not even really a nation, but of a nation. The super elite. They're the only ones that are blessed. They're the only ones that can kill a baby on live TV and turn around and not do a day in jail. There was a governor in, uh, the governor of uh, Michigan had put up uh, this faulty piping 
for the water supply of, uh, I don't know if it was part of Michigan or Detroit or whatever, but it was in the state of Michigan, and people got sick, and it came out that uh, he knowingly used uh, piping for the water that was going to contaminate the water and make the people sick. Well, guess what? After all, everything was said and done, he didn't do a minute in jail. Why? Because he's on. He's a gov. He's a governor. You know, corporations if they kill people, even if they know, like the cigarette industry, people get cancer from cigarettes. But guess what? People st still can buy, openly buy cigarettes. And um, the uh, cigarette companies uh, know that that it is number one addictive. And number two, it can kill you. It can, you know, you can suffer can cancer from it. But guess what? None of them go to jail because that's a corp corporate corporation. They can get they can get fined, they can get sued, but they can't go to jail. So they're the ones that are blessed. When this uh, C19 came out, everybody was under a curse. They had to close their businesses. They lost a lot of money. People went out of business. Some people killed themselves. Some people died. What happened to the super rich? And I'm talking about the lower class of the super rich, which is the, Be the Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, you know, Amazon, uh, Elon Musk, who's like the worst dancer on the planet Earth. <laughs> Just, hey, put Elon Musk dancing, and you can clearly see this guy's an Edomite. Uh, guys like that, individuals like that, the super, the, the, I'm, talk I'm not talking about Oprah Winfrey, she a, she a welfare case. You know, she's worth a couple billion dollars. And I'm not talking about um, uh, this guy, Jay-Z. He's worth, what, a couple billion dollars. Rihanna just became a billionaire, but guess what? They're not blessed. The ones that are blessed are worth hundreds of billions and even trillions of dollars. Like the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they're trillionaires. They've been making money for for over a hundred years just just to name two of the families the Oppenheimers you ain't gonna see no Oppen family of the Oppenheimer uh, uh, dynasty being uh, um, homeless that's, ge that's called generational wealth see a nigga don't understand generational wealth you know what that means Negro that, I'm going a little bit sidetracking. You get a guy that's a world champion, right? In boxing, you know, he, he retires. He's worth, you know, $150 million. But then he gets old and he's broke and his family's broke and they live and they back in the hood. Generational wealth is when this, the, the blessing of that money goes from one generation to your, your children, from your children to your grandchildren, from your grandchildren to your to your great grandchildren and Esau stays rich. If you're a member of the um Oppenheimers or the the Rothschilds, um what are the are the, the Schiffs, the Warburgs, the the Rockefellers, they're all rich. Their children are rich, their children, children are rich, rich and so forth. Not like you Negroes, because you're under a curse. And true blessings mean you're gonna be a uh, Somebody's going to bow down to you. You can do pretty much, you can do whatever the hell you want. And I've seen cases where super rich Edomites kill people and all the evidence is stacked up against them and they find them not guilty. They might have it on video. Oh, no, that's not him. They don't even go, a lot of them don't even go to trial, man. Like I said, the Rothschilds can kill a baby on TV and said that they did it and not do a minute in jail. You know, we don't need you, you uh, Negroes out there asking stupid questions like this, man. And why would you have the name spiritual food? There's nothing spiritual about you, man. And 144. Let's listen to a little bit more, man. But then you might have this guy out there teaching. Got a lot of guys teaching a lot of nonsense out there, man. They only did that with the Israelites. Now, 
I answered back and said, I think you need to learn how to read. And then I put Genesis. No, he has to learn how to come up under the true men of the most high, which obviously and then he he he's, he he gets on his he gets on the good side of this other other brother, the elder. Shalom, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Barakata. And then ask a fucking stupid question. Is it 15 and 16, which is like Elder Pastor Hart tells us, all the brothers in Great Millstone, you have to get into the habit of reading the full description that you have a question about and after. You got to read it in context because if you don't, you're going to pluck something out of thin air and you're going to see something that's not there. And we'll cover that briefly. Now, first, when you deal with the seed of Abraham, because see, the Christians, they do that. They take the scripture to see, there's a seed of Abraham. Yeah, but which seed? That's important. This is Genesis 21 and 12. Ultimately, and I'm going to go into the scripture. Ultimately, there was a chosen line from Noah. Noah had three sons. Out of those three sons, the chosen line went through Shem. Um, from Shem, Shem had five sons, and a lot of you don't even know that. Huh? So what, name the five sons. They, you scratching you, him, scratching your head inside joke. You scratching your head, you know, you know, looking at other people. What they gonna say? Afraid, half got your hands half up and half down, not knowing what to say. Don't be concerned about the other nations. The other nations are going to slavery. That's the only thing you need to know. Esau, Ham, Ishmael, all of them. All right? Out of the five sons of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Shem, you had Afaxad, Lud, uh, Elam, uh, Ashur, and, um, and Aram. Out of them, out of them, what line came out of, out of what, what the chosen line went through which of the five sons? A fact said. And as you go down, you had uh, Peleg and Joktan. The line went through Peleg, which means divide. Out of, out of that became I, one of the sons. The line uh, went down the I, I borrow or Hebrew, which that's the line. Then down the line to Abraham's father, a terror, down to Abraham and his brothers, and the line went to Abraham. And then from Abraham, Abraham had eight sons. The first son was Ishmael. The second son, that's where the line came through. Then from Isaac, had, Isaac and Rebekah had two sons, Jacob and Esau. The line went through Jacob. And then all the sons that came out of Jacob are the Israelites. That, that's the blessed seed. That's the order. Ain't no other nation going to get blessed. Esau is blessed right now. What the fuck Esau's business doing being blessed in the kingdom? Or damn Hamite being blessed in the kingdom? You get tired of this shit. Okay, so now let's let's go ahead and read that. I'm gonna make it quick because I'm gonna get get out there and try to make a couple of shekels. Anyway, it says Genesis 15, verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon uh, Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him, meaning he was in a deep sleep, meaning he was in a coma. Most I put him in a in a drug induced coma, a most high induced coma. He put, he, he, he couldn't wake up. Most I put him in that deep sleep. Anyway, it says uh, 13 verse And he said unto Abram Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and oh, for you niggas, for you, this 400 years is talking about America. You need to shut the fuck up, nigga. Yeah, man, you got this guy, uh, uh, HOI. I'm not, not HOI, I'm sorry. Uh, HODC, those clowns. HODC, they're teaching that, uh, that's talking about America. And we were only in Israel, I think they said 200, 200 some hard years. That's why nobody, 
do you, do you see Sarnetta trying to get in contact with them guys? Because they're on a low level. Because they teach that bullshit. Cornelius is an Edomite. Give me a goddamn break. You get mad, man. And it says, and he said, he said unto Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed, what seed? I went over it. Rewind it back and listen to it again. A, B, C, D. Go back and listen to it again. Get out of that romper room, uh, Sesame Street um, mindset. Stop being so goddamn simple. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and fools hate knowledge? That seed, singular, is talking about the Israelites. From the Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. It's not that hard. 13 verse again. And he said, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, these guys that think they're so deep, if you say, well, what does the word Abram mean? They're scratching their head. They're going in their back pocket, see if, see if they can find it. They're going in their cell, their phone, going to Google. What does Abram mean? It's a no surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. That's not talking about America. That's talking about Egypt, Mizraim. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Oh, let me, let me go to the word afflict. Let me go to the word afflict. Let's see what the Hebrew word is. Where we at? Where we at? Okay, afflict. The word is aina. Aina. To occupy, be bruised with, to oppress, humble, to... Humble meaning to bend your head down, bow your head down, push your head down, be afflicted, bow down, to be put down, become low, to be uh, depressed, to be downcast. When a nation takes over another nation, they downcast them. To be afflicted, to stoop, to humble oneself, to weaken oneself. Like you can hum I nod somebody by beating them down. A Rodney King, he was I nod. He was I nod. So now let's 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 go to these precepts here. I'm looking for Deuteronomy twenty two. Deuteronomy 22, verse 29. That the man that laid with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he have humbled Aina, her, meaning raped, he may not put her away all his days. And then right after that, it says Deuteronomy 26, verse uh, 6. And the Egyptians, and the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and as us and laid upon us hard bondage. So that word I know means to arrest somebody, to force somebody, in the case of a man and a woman, to rape a woman. Alright? So that's the law right there. Okay, where are we at? I'm sorry, I lost my space. 13 verse. And he said unto Abraham, Know of his journey that thy seed uh, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, the Egyptians, Mizraim, Ham, and they shall, and they, the Egyptians, shall afflict them, humble them, to rape them 400 years. It's not talking about America. And also that nation, Mizraim, whom they, whom they shall serve, will I judge? 
and afterward shall they come out with great substance. What, how did you think they made the golden calf? Because they, the word there was borrowed of the Egyptians. I mean, they took, it was a, rep, a form of reparations. And, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now why did they say, because the iniquity of the Amorites are not yet full? It, it, you could have put in Amorites, Canaan, Canaanites, Amorites, Hivites, Jebusites, Parasites. The Amorites were a, a, a family of the, uh, one of the tribes of the Canaanites, because they're still going to be they're still going to be in the land. Because were they in the land when we left out of Egypt or Mizraim? Yes, we were in the wilderness for forty years. Then there was a time where the Most High said, "Okay, I'm going to set you up to get the Promised Land." So that was that was forty years. So 40 years, uh, the, 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 the Canaanites are doing their wickedness. And the Mosai said, okay, you're going to go in there and you're going to kill all of them. It says, um, seven, 17 verse, Genesis 15 verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and burning lamp that passed between those pieces, meaning the sacrificial animal. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram. And we read about that co co covenant, 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 the promised seed, saying, unto thy seed. What seed? Unto thy seed. It didn't say seeds. It says, unto, unto thy seed. Go back to the 13th verse. A, B, C, D. And, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed. Now, did not the Lord, did not Abraham have more than one seed? Didn't he have eight seeds? So it says thy seed. Eighteen verse again. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with agreement, contract with Abram saying unto thy seed, which I, I, I went through from, from uh, Shem to Afaxad to uh, Apeleg to, to Ibar or Hebrew to Terah to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to, the, to, to Jacob's sons. Unto thy seed. That's what it's talking about. The Israelites have I given this land from the river of Egypt. Unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So that's all that, that whole plot of land is our land. It says the Canaanites and, and the Kenzanites and the uh, Kadmonites, the Hittites and the Parasites and the Rephaim and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. Now what happened to these, these uh, Canaanites? They were gonna the land was gonna be taken away from them. 18 verse again. And the same day the Lord Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed. Are these people the seed of are these people the seed of Abraham stupid? The Canaanites, the Parasites. It says, In the same day Yahweh made a covenant with Abram. Saying unto thy seed. Who is the seed of Abraham? Had nothing to do with Canaanites, man. Have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates? That's talking about the Israelites. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.